Okay guys, now in this video, let's discuss about the actions of thyroid hormones. Now what is the major important thyroid hormone? See, T4 is in active form and most of the thyroid hormones are in which form? T4 only. Okay, so thyroxine T4 is the inactive form. Now in tissues, what will happen? In tissues the t4 will be converted into t3 t4 will be converted into t3 in the peripheral tissues this is called as peripheral conversion now this peripheral conversion happens with the help of an enzyme called as 5 prime deiodinase okay so 5 prime deiodinase is an enzyme which helps in peripheral conversion from t4 to t3 now we all know Thyroid hormones are catabolic hormones. Here thyroid hormones I mean T3 active form. So this T3 active form triiodothyronine it's a catabolic hormone. Why I am saying it as catabolic hormone? It breaks down everything. Now this T3 acts on liver, causes a glycogenolysis and increases the blood level of sugar. Okay. So there is increased blood glucose level. So T3 increases the blood glucose levels. True. Cortisol increases the blood glucose levels. True. Growth hormone increases the blood glucose levels. True. Okay. So there was this one question uh, which was kept on asked in the exams. All of the following hormone increases the blood glucose levels except. So you should know T3, growth hormone, cortisol, norepinephrine and uh, epinephrine the catecholamines all of them increases the blood glucose levels. Right now our topic of concern is thyroid hormones. Even our thyroid hormones T3 will increase the blood glucose levels. And this T3 will also act on adipose tissue and causes the breakdown of the fats. So that is the lipolysis, increases the lipolysis. Even T3 acts on the proteins, will cause the breakdown of proteins, older proteins. That is the proteolysis, increases the lipolysis, increases the proteolysis, increases a glycogenolysis. So all broken down, everything is getting breaking down. So it's a catabolic hormone, not an anabolic hormone, catabolic hormone. Growth hormone is an example of anabolic hormone. Okay, having said that, now this T3 decreases the cholesterol levels and also increases the basal metabolic rate. Now you will get it out, what exactly is this basal metabolic rate? Basal metabolic rate is nothing but the amount of calories which were needed to maintain the homeostasis for 24 hours. In a simple way, I can say something like this, to run this 75 kg body, imagine that a person is 75 kilos now to run the entire body for 24 hours every activity every reaction in the body all activities nerve conduction heart rate everything so to run a body for 24 hours how many calories are needed that's a basal metabolic rate simple now I can say my basal metabolic rate is 3000 calories as an adult male the basal metabolic rate can be 2700 or 3000 calories which means to run this body I need 3000 calories for 24 hours okay so that's the basal metabolic rate so whenever T3 increases whenever the thyroid hormones increases in the body basal metabolic rate also increases more calories will be needed more ATP will be broken down more calories are needed to run the body okay having said that now this t3 also important to maintain the body temperature t3 increases the body temperature t3 is a thermogenic hormone t3 be, uh, t3 breaks down the adp when, when the atp are getting broken down energy will be released that energy is that energy in the form of heat maintains the body temperature okay so t3 increases the blood glucose levels increases the lipolysis increases the proteolysis decreases the cholesterol levels increases the basal metabolic rate as well as the T3 is a thermogenic hormone. Now, let's see some other important functions of the T3. Now, T3 during childhood, thyroid hormones during childhood are very much important for the bone growth. We all know bone growth is under the control of growth hormone. Growth hormone increases the bone length. But remember, not only the growth hormone, but thyroid hormones are also equally important for increasing the bone height, bone length. Now, during during embryogenesis and during childhood this t3 and t4 are very very important for the formation of synapse between the neurons so proper brain development is under the control of t3 okay t3 helps in proper formation of synapses between the neurons so for brain development t3 is must ensure and t3 will act on the myocardium t3 acts on the myocardium increases the sympathetic receptor number on the myocardium what i am saying is Thyroid hormone, it acts on the myocardial cells. 
Now, whenever T3 is acting on the myocardial cells, on these myocardial cells, there will be more number of the receptor for the catecholamines. For example, initially, on a myocardial cell, there are 5 sympathetic receptors. But whenever T3 acts on these myocardial cells, now there will be 10 receptors, 10 sympathetic receptors. So the sensitivity of the myocardium for the catecholamines is increased. More the number of receptors, more powerful will be the stimulation. So by acting on the myocardial cells, T3 sensitizes the myocardial cells for catecholamines. T3 increases the heart rate by sensitizing the myocardial cells for catecholamines. Okay. Now, see this is what I am saying, T3 increases the heart rate, no doubt. How? By making the myocardium more sensitive to catecholamines. For example, let's see here guys. Now, whenever T3 is acting on this myocardium, this is the myocardium which I am showing. Initially on the myocardium, we all know there is this beta 1 adrenergic receptor. Beta 1 receptor is a sympathetic receptor which is present on the ventricular myocardial cells. Now, whenever this T3 is acting on the myocardial cells, now there are only 3 receptors. Now, how many receptors will come? Instead of 3, there will be now, uh, now there will be, see here, now there will be 10 receptors. Okay. So, more the number of receptors, more powerful will be the stimulation. So, this is what T3 is going to do to the myocardium. Now, let's see how thyroid hormones are increased the basal metabolic rate. We have discussed thyroid hormone increases the basal metabolic rate. Whenever you take the thyroid hormones or whenever there is increased production of thyroid hormones, you will require more calories. You will, uh, you will require more calories to run the body. Okay. So, how, how this will happen? See, whenever thyroid hormones are acting on the cells, what will happen? Thyroid hormones, they are having intranuclear receptors. What does I mean by? See, these yellow colored dots are the thyroid hormones. They are not having, the thyroid hormones are not having the cell surface receptors. Thyroid hormones can simply enter into the cell. They are crossing the cell membrane. That is a very important point. Thyroid hormones can directly cross the cell membrane. They will enter into the cytoplasm and they can even enter into the nucleoplasm. The thyroid hormones can enter into the nucleus. Why they are entering into the nucleus? Why? Because the receptor for the thyroid hormone. See this green color thing which I am showing you is the receptor for the thyroid hormone. So thyroid hormone are going to bind with the receptor like you know causes a transcription and translation process helps in the production of proteins. Which proteins uh, you should know. Normally see normally this is how a body cell will look like under the influence of this thyroid hormones like no before thyroid hormones i should say before the influence of thyroid hormones there are only some proteins which are present on these cells what are these proteins see these proteins are throwing the sodium out bringing the potassium in throwing the sodium out bringing the potassium in throwing the sodium out bringing the potassium in so normally on the surface of each and every cell there is something protein called as sodium potassium atpase so these proteins are using atp for the movement of sodium and potassium so, when this thyroid hormones act on this cell, how it will happen? See, what will happen? Now, please look at this image guys. Now, whenever the thyroid hormones, whenever they are acting on a cell, now see how many sodium potassium ATPases are being planted on the cell. Now, almost, initially there are only 4. Just think like this. Initially, there are only 4. Now, there are almost 8, 9 sodium potassium ATPases which are present on the cell. Just I am giving the number is not exactly uh, true. I am just giving you a reference. Okay. So whenever T3, T4 acts on a cell, there will be production of more sodium potassium ATPases. More the number of sodium potassium ATPases, more ATP broke down. More ATP broke down means more calories are needed. Okay. For the functioning of the sodium potassium ATPases, now more ATP are needed, more calories are being broken down. So every day basal metabolic rate also increases. Okay, this is how thyroid hormones increases the basal metabolic rate. So, in one statement, we can say thyroid hormones increase the basal metabolic rate by increasing the number of sodium potassium ATPases count on the cell surface. Okay, now let's see what are the differences between hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism. Very simple. Hypo means less amount of T3 T4, hyper means less, uh, more amount of T3 T4, but this is not all the time true. Why? Because, see, if I am saying hypothyroidism, yes less amount of T3, T4 but in initial phases, initial phases, the T3 can be normal. Okay, yes, it is decreased but in the initial phases, the T3 can be normal and T4 can be normal. So, what I am saying is, 
hypothyroidism condition t3 can be decrease or it can be normal t4 can be decrease or it can be normal but all the time remember in the conditions of hypothyroidism what happened to tsh levels yes your body is knowing that the person is going into hypothyroidism so what the anterior pituitary will be producing the anterior pituitary will be producing more amount of tsh so in hypothyroidism there will be more amount of tsh in hyperthyroidism there can be increased t3 and increased t4 or sometimes the t3 and t4 can be normal in the initial stages but the amount of tsh will all the time decrease in the conditions of hyperthyroidism the tsh will be low so one important mcq i want you to know here what is the most sensitive investigation for hypo and hyperthyroidism please look at guys the differences between hypo and hyperthyroidism see in both hypo and hyperthyroidism t3 and t4 levels can be normal but what is actually changing in t3 and t4 it's the tsh levels so in tsh will all the time be elevated in high uh, hypothyroidism and TSH will all the time be decreased in hyperthyroidism. So the most sensitive investigation for both hyper and hypothyroidism is TSH levels. Okay, TSH levels. Now having said that, let's discuss about a one important uh, clinical link which is called as congenital hypothyroidism so what exactly is congenital hypothyroidism very simple there was this one baby by birth itself in this baby t3 and t4 production is not happening so by birth congenitally the baby is suffering with hypothyroidism no t3 and t4 we have just seen t3 and t4 are the important hormone for the development of bones t3 and t4 are the very important hormone for the development of brain so now if a baby is suffering with congenital hypothyroidism the term we are going to use it's called as a cretinism so who is this cretin baby cretinism is a condition where the baby is deficient with the t3 and t4 so whenever there is no t3 and t4 brain development cannot happen whenever the brain development is not happening the patient will be the, the this baby will suffer with mental retardation so cretin babies so cretinism is a condition where the baby is going to have mental retardation as the bone growth is not happening the baby will be stunted okay the, the baby is going to have stunted growth so this is the decreased growth so cretinism is due to congenital hypothyroidism where the baby is mentally retarded as well as the baby is having stunted growth or the uh, decreased growth or the delayed growth okay now after this let's discuss about one more syndrome called as the refitoff syndrome refitoff syndrome guys we have discussed in the basics whenever you have abundant amount of t4 okay t4 is a major one right so whenever you have abundant amount of t4 t4 will give negative feedback to the anterior pituitary and hypothalamus to decrease TSH levels. Now imagine that whatever the T4 which is getting produced, that T4 is ineffective. Now what I am trying to put into your mind is yes, there is excessive amount of T4 in the body. There is increased amount of T4. But still TSH is also more. Normally whenever there is increased amount of T4, the T4 should have to down regulate the anterior pituitary. The T4 should have to decrease the production of TSH. But what exactly is a Refitoff syndrome? Refitoff syndrome is a condition where the person is having hyperthyroidism. There is excessive amount of T4 is there, but still TSH is also more. Why? Why? Because the peripheral T4 resistance, this T4 is unable to give the negative feedback. Okay. So this syndrome is called as a Refitoff syndrome where the T4 peripheral resistance is seen. So there is no negative feedback. So there is excessive amount of TSH. So the kind of question that will be asked in your exam is what is the condition in which both the TSH levels as well as the T4 levels are elevated. It's a Refitoff syndrome. Okay guys, we have discussed all the important points regarding the action of thyroid hormones. In the next video, we will discuss about the pharmacological links with the thyroid hormone. Hope the video is helpful. Thank you.